Good afternoon and thanks for joining SMTV Live on this Thursday. I'm Duncan Gilman. And I'm Jamie McCook. You know, a couple months ago we saw Twitter sever ties with LinkedIn. It was kind of like the long-term romance couldn't last past the rocky summer and they broke up. And in swoops, jealous boyfriend Facebook <laughs> to get all of the traffic because that's what happens. <coughs> If all of the links to Twitter are gone, then of course the links that are there on LinkedIn are going to swoop up and swoop in and get all that traffic. And that's what happened with the spike in traffic on Facebook. Facebook saw about a thousand percent increase in traffic from LinkedIn because Twitter has decided they want a little bit more control over their API and has restricted access. Kind of interesting. Yeah, that is. I'm, I wonder if Facebook was pretty upset about that move by Twitter. <laughs> I'm guessing they weren't. I'm guessing they didn't lose too much sleep over that. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if Twitter is going to kind of keep up with it, or if they're going to, if they lose traffic, if they're going to maybe rethink their API decision. That's a good point because I don't know if Twitter cares. I mean, the idea here is that Twitter loses this traffic because they're no longer sending their streams directly to LinkedIn. But if having more control, having uh, to ha having the ability to rein in their API is more important to Twitter. Maybe yeah. they don't care. Yeah, I guess we'll find out eventually. We'll <laughs> find out. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting to piggyback on the Twitter redesigns that we saw because we clearly see they're going in a very independent direction, capitalizing on mobile access and all these new features. So it'll be interesting to uh, it'll be interesting to see how they kind of compensate for this loss. Right. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> how are your social media campaigns going? Are you getting what you want out of them? Because we are here to help you make the most out of your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, blogs, Pinterest, whatever you're working on. You can email us your questions to questions at splashmediau.com, or you can tweet them to us by using the hashtag SMTVQuestions. Let's get started with a question from Mike. Mike would like to know, how should I divide my time on all the social media platforms? That's a really great question. I kind of wish we had you know, a cut and dry answer for you, but we don't. Um, it's really going to kind of depend on you know, which sites you know, are working best for you. You can kind of go one of two routes. You can you know, go and focus on the one that's working best for you now, or you can go to the neglected one. Say you're not, you don't, your engagement on Twitter is kind of lacking. You can focus there to try to get that engagement up. So I mean, it really kind of depends on which route you're going to want to take. It totally does, and it also partly depends on where traditionally do we see the most engagement for your kind of business? If you're more B2B, we might see more engagement for you on LinkedIn. If you're more B2C, if you have a company that uses a lot of multimedia and photos and video, maybe something like Tumblr or Pinterest would be better for you. So take a look at that. Take into consideration where your industry does very well right. and use that as part of the equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great tip. Garrick wrote to us, is there a way to go to one social media site and post and then the post automatically trickle down to other social media sites? Perfect question that kind of piggybacks on our news today about, the, about uh, Twitter severing ties with LinkedIn. Now, there are ways to do it, but you have to be careful because you don't want to end up with two situations, one of which is having characters that don't fit in a social media platform. For instance, if you're automatically sending your tweets to Facebook, Facebook doesn't recognize things like the at sign for mentions or hashtags, the pound sign. The other issue you might run into is having all of your messages look the same and end up with sort of a generic mess that it looks uh, identical across all of your platforms, which isn't really engaging. Right, yeah, you want to make it seem personal. You don't want to seem like a robot's out there sending out all this stuff because people aren't going to want to talk to you if they think, oh, this is all you know, automated. Right, now for Garrick and anybody else who's wondering, that said, there are ways that you can incorporate, you know, on a, on a per platform basis, some tools that will help you make those announcements if you have a lot of stuff going. For example, if you have a lot of YouTube videos, you're actively putting videos up maybe several times a week, there are ways you can send those out automatically to Twitter by connecting those two. Right. Marianne wants to know, how do I sell with Facebook and not be too obvious? That's a great question. It is a really great question. Um, again, it's like it's one of those things. We try to want you to stick to the 90-10 rule. So when you're posting, you want 90% of your content to be you know, content for them, to kind of let them know about the industry. You don't want to be too salesy. People love to buy, but they hate to be sold. So you kind of want to take that into account whenever you're writing out your posts. Because again, you know, if people are sitting there and you're you know, shoving down their face, you know, buy from us, buy from us, you know, you're going to turn them off a little bit. So you kind of want to try to avoid that. Yeah, and when it comes to the 90-10 rule, part of your job, Marianne, is to take that 10%, and when you post about your products or services or coupons or promotions, contests, when you post in that 10%, make sure that it's very clear what the 
consumer is going to get out of it. Make sure it's very clear what the incentives are. What are you going to get for your investment of time or money from your company? Right. Absolutely. Reagan wrote to us, how do I find my target audience with social media? Well, there are a couple of different ways. I, the first one that always comes to my mind is just searching on individual platforms. Twitter has a fantastic advanced search. We can really dig in. Same thing with LinkedIn. It's a little bit tougher on Facebook because you can't really reach out directly to your customers individually um, until they reach out to you with a comment. Unlike Twitter, you can mention somebody without a connection already established on LinkedIn. You can reach out and offer to connect. But of course, another way is through Splash Cube. Absolutely, you can go to your automated marketing and set up an you know an initiative there. And what you do, it's really simple. You just go and click on Add New Initiative, and then you just want to want to go in and you can search by your industry. So, for example, we're going to go ahead and use insurance, for example. So, well, you'll go into the key phrase and you'll just type in insurance, and then we're going to go ahead and include Dallas. If you're a private insurance agent, you're probably going to be selling more local, so you don't really want people from New York because um, that you're not going to be able to benefit them. So you're going to go in, and then you can click on the one. You know, like there's Allstate is one of the there's ones on Allstate, our list. I see it there. Perfect. So you can go ahead and hit Find Prospects under Allstate. And just keep in mind here, you're not going in and you're not, you know, basically taking all of Allstate's, you know, clients. You're going in and you're just finding, you know, more qualified leads for yourself. So you're going in and they're following Allstate for a reason. So more than likely they're interested in insurance, you know, to some respect. Right, I totally agree. The, the idea here is not to be a shark and, and grab up all of your competitors' clients. The idea is you want to start engaging with people who care about insurance, care about their insurance needs, and who live in your region. That way you can start talking about Dallas life or family life without seeming too salesy. And then once you start engaging, then you mention the company, then you, then you direct it to a more sales-oriented post. Right, and so when you're doing your templates, they, everyone always wants to remember, you know, you don't want to sound, you know, like spam, so you don't want to include any links or contact us information, and you want to ask open-ended questions. So Absolutely. it's starting that conversation as opposed to just jumping straight in. Yeah, and I think searching on Cube, searching on all the individual platforms, combine all that together and you have a fantastic um, oh, yeah. listening strategy. Mm -hmm. That's all the time we have today. We want to thank you for joining us this Thursday for our live broadcast of SMTV. And thank you for sending in those great questions. Keep them coming. For Splash Media, I'm Duncan Gilman. And I'm Jamie McCook. Thanks for stopping by.